I am so glad to see somebody finally hand her goddamn head to her on a plate. And I'm like, come on through, cookie. I want to put my soapbox, that's basically Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 10, episode 16. As I said, I'm glad somebody handed her head to her on the platter, darling. Just keep watching and you'll find out what I'm talking about. Can't stand that bitch. Anyway, okay, so first things first. We see Candy actually sitting with Mama Joyce and they're kind of chatting back and forth how they do, gossiping. And Candy is seeing a disconnect with Mama Joyce when it comes to Portia. Candy couldn't understand why is it that Mama Joyce is caping for Portia and all of this little stuff and she's still trying to like put everything off on Phaedra now and she's caping for Portia. And Candy was real bothered by it. And I just like kind of laughed. I said, because your mama's always up to no good. Your mama's always doing more than what she should be doing. And, you know, it just is what it is. Joyce is being Joyce. She's inserting herself. That's what she does. So I just kind of laughed at that. Candy just kind of let it go like, whatever, mama, whatever. Then we see Portia and Lauren. And um, this is the first time we've seen Portia since Barcelona. So I'm saying, okay, well, what does Portia have going on? You know, I was interested to see what her attitude was going to be like now that she's been away from the girls for a little bit of time and all that. She's Portia. She's Portia. When she told Lauren, I really, I'm really ready to tell them all to kiss my ass individually. I said, okay. <laughs> all right. It, okay. That's fine. It is what it is. And I don't even know what to say about that because you've gotten into it with each of these people because of some shit that you've done. Um, yeah, they dragging it in the ground, but some of the shit that you've done, it shouldn't even be an option of whether or not anybody was going to forgive you because some of that shit you didn't deserve to be forgiven for. It just was what it was. But whatever, Portia. She's a ding dong anyway. Next, there's Kim meeting up with Sheree. Can I tell you how bad the two of these got on my nerves? Because y'all know I can't stand Kim. And I'm getting to a point where I really don't like Sheree. Sheree has started to really get on my nerves. She's a troublemaker. She's shifty as she's shady. She backpedals as she pussy pops. She's just really... Sheree is problematic. I don't know why nobody actually sees it. Like, if I was a part of the group, I would be like, I'm not going over with this bitch. Because this bitch is always, when there's always something going on, this bitch is always the nucleus. She's always down toward the center of it. Anything that's gotten told, she's told it. She literally, and it's not about, you know, it'd be funny with this whole bone carrying thing. We've gone beyond that. This bitch just flat out starts trouble. Flat out. She's not a bitch. I would invite that bitch to nothing. Not nothing. What I would do is give her a good ass whooping now. Because you like starting trouble, bitch. Let's see how you handle some of your own. And I give her a good fucking ass whooping. That's what I would do for Shrey. Quite honestly. And just so I'm at a point where everything about Sheree just starting to get on my damn nerves. Then you're sitting over with your fake phony lying ass sitting there. Oh, yeah, my bad back, this, that, and the other. You're steadily talking about having a bad back and how they put you on this single bed and all that and how the girls, you know, you're sitting here talking to Kim like you really don't like them. Is That's what my point is. Does anybody else feel that way? You're talking to Kim like you feel how she feels. about Kim don't fucking like them black bitches. She don't like none of them black bitches. None of them. And you sound like a black bitch that don't like them black bitches either talking to this whore. 
and agreeing with everything she's saying. Fuck you, Sheree. You're ridiculous. Anyway, but she saw her bad back. But meanwhile, you're sitting around with these five-inch heels on. And why do you even have them on, bitch? Because the outfit is trash. You got on some old sweater from down at the Fav and Dime and some jeans from the Kmart. And then you got on these blue patent leather pumps. Where are you going? You look crazy. But you got a bad back, right? Okay. Put your foot on the ground. You'll probably feel better, you goofball. Anyway, and at home. You ain't even out. You're at home. Walking around in this big house with these heels on. Girl, sit down. Anyway. And then we go over, and it's at the same time we over at Nene's house. Nene's chit-chatting back and forth. And they're talking about the whole, you know, back and forth. Talking about the situation about Brielle and the roaches and the, all this. Nene, bitch, I, I need to know, but, okay, tell me, bitch, why do you have your arm out of the neckline of that calf tan? You over there pretending to be a designer again, bitch? Because it would be fine if the caftan was made that way. It's not made that way. That is a regular caftan that you, when you put it on, you stuck your arm out of the motherfucking neckline and you got it over there. If you looked at it good, you actually see the other sleeve under her arm. Nene, what are you doing? You look ridiculous. But I guess, you know... They got all kind of clowns running around in Atlanta talking about their designers. So I guess you could just put your shirt on backwards and then all of a sudden you're a fucking designer. I, not in my life and not in my world, but okay. I guess. Fuck out of here. Then we're sitting there. We find out that Brielle, what they were saying that Brielle was invited to Nene's house by Brent. That's not even what really happened. More of that lying ass bullshit. Brent said, uh, no, Brielle called me, she said she was out our way and she was going to stop by. And I didn't see no problem with it. I said, okay. And then he's like, no, that's no. You're, he's like, I was having a party, an adult party, and Brielle was with her mama. I said, mm, shady, 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 shady. I said, that's a mess. That's a whole mess. So, that got that whole thing going on. Now, there's this whole thing where Kim is upset at the fact that Nene has come out publicly and called her racist. In her post, she made a post and it stated basically that Kim was racist. Well, what's the big deal? I mean, that's so much worse than you posting that she got racist. Neither one, neither thing was good. I mean, but you don't just go on social media and accuse a person of having roaches and then think that they're not going to come back and say nothing about you. You don't go, it's really crazy. That Kim, honey, Kim got some shit. And then I'm sitting there and um. Kim's all like, I'm not racist, I'm not racist. And Sheree's like, I know, I know. Yes, you are, bitch. And that's why I always say I don't like Kim. Y'all have heard me say that over and over. I don't watch her show. I don't do none of that. I don't care for Kim Zolciak. The bitch is racist. She is, and I don't give a shit what anybody says. I get it from her. I feel it from her. I felt it from her for seasons and seasons all the way back. I've always felt like she was she thought she was better, and she really don't care for these black bitches, but it's just a way of getting a coin. Hey, it is what it is. If you black bitches allow this whore to be around you all and think that she's better than you all and all of this and looking down on y'all, you know, she does all these little slat things, just carrying the red cup to their house like their houses are too, aren't good enough for her to drink out of. You trailer park whore. You know, and I don't do the race car. Y'all know it. I don't live my life that way. I ain't into that. But when it is, then it just is. It's always been. I've never, and when Croy came into the picture, she just got buck wild with it. 
She got buck wild with it because Croy come from come in the door serving redneck teas and called them bitches all kind of clowns and everything else. Croy had nothing nice to say about these ladies at all when he first come into the program. I felt it really bad when he came in. I always thought it anyway, but I, fe I felt it really bad once Corey came into the picture and then Kim did like people do. And, you know, it's my husband and I go in with what my husband is doing and she started being fucked up. And that's just what I saw. That's what I saw. And I've been watching Real Housewives of Atlanta since they came on the air. It's, it's what I felt. It's what I saw. I don't like that bitch. I don't like her stinking ass husband. Fuck her and fuck her kids and all of them. And her motherfucking maid and whoever else comes with her. Fuck that bitch. Fuck her. I don't need to see that bitch. I don't care nothing about what that bitch is talking about. And Sheree, you sitting around co-signing shit with her. You long head, goddamn jailbird dating ass fool. Ooh, they were on my nerves. They were really on my nerves. Real bad. Um, and there is no excuses for Kim. Just because Kim was sitting on black dick in the beginning doesn't mean she's not a racist. He was a damn fool. It was giving her stinking ass money and things of that nature and making her feel special. But that didn't mean that she liked his black ass. She liked his black dick. But don't they all? Anyway, moving on. Let me go because I got heated over here. Anyhow, um, Will and Cynthia, speaking of some more stupid shit. So after all that happened, Cynthia, now you over there playing Uber driver to Will? It's cool. You don't owe nobody no explanations, but I don't want to see you crying anymore. You understand? You understand? And then, see, because the, the thing that happened, you should have never got all that upset about it. You could have stopped it all in the beginning. All you had to do is tell Eva, it don't really make a difference what he's doing because we're not dating. We're, we're not, you know, a couple. We're just dating casually and just hanging out with each other. And, um, you know, eventually I'm going to um, continue to, to do uh, three-point turn spins and falling on his cock, honey. And that's all. So it doesn't really matter what else he's doing, but it does matter to you. You were jealous and you felt stupid. And that shit you were talking that blown up in your face. And you like the man. And you like his whatever it is that he gives that we ain't seen. And you were feeling some kind of way when you found out you were sharing. But you set the rules. So no more crying. Okay? But he let you know. I was about to just let you go when all that happened. But I realized we wasn't even dating. So, like, whatever. And he ain't even called her no more until he needed a ride to the uh, airport. Called up. It's just like she was Uber Eats. Get on over here and take me to the airport. Blow me off right fast. And turn that camera off. And she went flying. I said, girl, shut up, Cynthia. You cry another tear about Will, and I'll smack you in your eye. Stupid ass. Anyway, moving on. Candy and Sheree, sit down. I got very, very irritated. Very irritated. They started talking about the comedy show. So we did this whole thing with the comedy show situation with Nene and how she said that she hopes the woman gets raped and got kicked off of the escape tour. You all know the story that happened. So that's it. She made a bad joke. She got kicked off the tour and all of that. So everybody was pretty much weighing in on it. We seen Nene, um, how Marlo and Cynthia went over to visit her and talk with her. And we see she was really broke down. She was really remorseful about what had happened. She was very sorry. Um, and I, I think she's really, she's really sad about what happened. I think she genuinely was sad. It was messed up. It was it was a bad deal what happened, you know. Um, you live and you learn. It was an expensive ass lesson, but you live and you learn. Um Sheree. Bouncing back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You really don't like Nene. You really don't. You don't like Nene, and this has been this way again. This goes all the way back to the beginning. You're fake and you're phony. Because you're not always willing to stand up and say, bitch, I just don't like you, bitch. You you just won't say it. And I guess it's for your spot in the show. 
But from the first that we ever met you, Sheree, you've been throwing subtle shade at Nene. You've always done it. You've always done it. I don't know what it all stems from, but I know ever since we first met you, bitch, you've never been a friend to Nene. You've always been sideways to Nene. And that's just, you know, history. From the very first episode, that whole situation with the party, and she wasn't on the list and all that, this is what we know of you, Sheree. And this is who you've shown that you are. You're shady, bitch, and you can't be trusted. Now, you're sitting here, you're bouncing back and forth. You asked Candy, couldn't, to just your tour, couldn't you fight for Nene? But then you turn right back around and said in your confessional, I'm surprised Candy was taking this all so lightly. So you're like trying to come for Candy, like Candy didn't do all she could for Nene, like she wasn't being a good friend to Nene. But at the same time, you really don't want Candy to fight for Nene. So which is it, long head ass? You all over the place. You act just like that fucking Kim. And that's just why you're going to be just like you are over there being shady. But eventually somebody going to figure it out. Somebody going to knock the shit out of you. I'm telling you. You, ooh. Girl, she's too much. Anyway, fuck her. Let's go on to this last situation, which was Candy meeting up with Kim. So they're going to hash out all their little shit. Kim's late, late, late. Okay, as usual. Croy brings her, as usual. Her and Candy get something about that. Candy's like, well, this is what's happening. You know, this is what's being said about this whole situation about Croy always dropping you off. Like, that bitch got all in her feelings. And got to tell about people was jealous of her. And Candy was playing real nice with her at first. You know, she was like really sitting there like, okay, Kim, yeah. And Kim was trying to get, she was getting a little buck with Candy. And then, you know, we flash back and forth and we see, and even before she went in, we seen her say, I might be out real soon. Like she, she basically... Stated to Corey, like, I'm going to go in here and let Candy have it real fast and I'm coming back out here. Well, she got the, the, the surprise of her life because Candy wasn't into that shit today. Today was the day that Candy had time to fuck with you, Kim. And then, and then they showed her confessional. She's talking about how, yeah, Candy cost me $40,000 in lawyers. Well, um, and... You stole $80,000, bitch. You can say what you want to say. Yes, Candy made mistakes. No, Candy didn't handle her business properly. But at the end of the day, bitch, you stole $80,000 worth of profit. And if it costs you $40,000 worth of lawyers to fight to try to keep whatever you ended up keeping at the end, good for you, bitch, because you tried to do some shady shit and Candy didn't just roll over because this is what your thing is. For some reason, bitch, you have a tendency to think that everything Thing black is stupid. And they're not in Candy had to show you. She had to show you. And then she showed you again here tonight. She handed your goddamn head to you on a platter. You were doing all this barking and Candy was being real cool. And then Candy was like, whoa, hey, wait a minute. Who are you cussing at? Who are you cussing at? I said, oh, here we go. I can see Candy's eyes got big. I said, come on, Candy, come on through. Because I was wondering how long you was going to let this bitch keep talking shit to you. And Candy got her ass together and told her, if you don't like what I'm saying, you can get the hell on up and walk on out of here and get back in that car like you usually do. But you're not going to sit up here and talk to me crazy, bitch. I said, I know that's right, Candy. And that bitch, uh-huh, big tough Kim. Yeah, everything black's not stupid, bitch. And Kim, she, got, she went to backpedaling and pussy popping. Well, I thought we was just going to have a nice conversation. She said, I came here to have a nice conversation with you. But if you want to go there, bitch, we can go there. I said, all right, go there. Go, go. She eyes over there, push your candy. Get her, bitch, get her. Man, this one tap my hand. She <laughs> for that old patty shit. I was so glad that Candy got her ass together. And the whole conversation switched around. Then Candy started running the conversation, and that bitch humbled herself and sat there like she had some goddamn sense. Fucking whore. She had on some cute shoes, though. Fucking bitch. I can't stand her. Oh! There were some cute-ass sandals, though, but I, ooh, I can't stand Kim. She pulled her, she pulled that shit back, and they went on. Then Candy told her when she said something about the fr our friendship just broke up over nothing, and this, that, and all that shit was true. All that was true. 
You know, all of that was true. And she told her the shit you did to Nene was wrong. What Nene did wasn't too cool either. But you and Brielle was wrong. You know, Kim ain't want to hear none of that shit from that black bitch. She ain't want to hear that. But it wasn't no thing because Candy was like, mm hmm. And when she had the nerve to be in the confessional, I don't know what's wrong with her. Um, maybe some of these women want to screw Croy because they, um, you know, they all is sitting around and they all worried about what Croy's doing. And Croy waiting on me in the car. I can't tell a girl, don't nobody, nobody think about you. and ain't nobody think about Croy. And don't nobody want to screw no goddamn Croy. Child, please. Take your thumbnail and take him on back home. Don't nobody want him, honey. A mess. Just trying it. And she told her, and stop saying that people were jealous. Ain't nobody jealous of you, Kim. I said, all right, Candy, bitch. She got her together and then told her and all that. She says, you know what? We went through that little situation about the money and all of that. And I believe if we had never done business together, we would probably still be tight. Y'all wouldn't, though. But okay. Anyway, and she gonna say, so I don't want to talk about that no more. So that's your cue. Don't bring this shit up no more, bitch. Candy got Kim's ass together. I was here for it. I really was. So Candy said to her, she said, so we good now? And she will say, well, yeah. And I can see it on her face. I said, mm, child, wait until you go back to the reunion time, honey. Wait until you see this shit air and you see these confessionals. No, y'all not cool. No, y'all not never going to be cool because that bitch thinks that she's better than you. And how dare you speak to her that way, you black bitch. So, no, y'all ain't cool, and y'all ain't never going to be cool. And I'm waiting for the reunion because I know you're going to get her ass together again, Candy, and I'm going to be here for it. Fuck Kim Zolciak, you old raggedy monkey with a goddamn wig on ass bitch. I hate her. I hate her so much. And, Andy, I don't know why you keep bringing her back here, fucking bitch. Anyway, that was it for the show. I'm glad Candy got her ass, chopped her damn wig down. Anyway, I'll talk to y'all next week. Next week, yeah. Next week. Guess I'll be on next week, child. Seems like this shit been going on forever. Lord have mercy. Later.